We have another amazing speaker speaker today. He's a president, and he's going to talk from the entertaining speaker manual. I request uh, his evaluator Rajesh to read out his objectives. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Our speaker today is attempting an advanced communication project on the entertaining speaker manual. Speaking after dinner, and the objectives of the speech are to prepare an entertaining after dinner talk on a specific theme. Deliver the talk using the skills developed in the preceding projects and the time allotted to the speaker is 8 to 10 minutes. Over to those masters. Let me call Mohan. Um, he's an amazing speaker and he's my mentor also. He says the fact that he's pursuing the high school passion, his passion was to actually become a public speaker. He believes that age is not a number. He can pursue it at whatever age he wants to. So let me welcome Mohan. Ravindam. Ravindam. Mohan. <laughs> There is no better way than to celebrate Middle East 500 meeting atop this beautiful hill with so much of greenery all around. Thanks to Thomas Abraham for his graciousness to accommodate all of us in his private hill and farmhouse. Look at the lake, crystal clear water. What a beautiful view from here. On one side, there are about 100 goats in the farm. In fact, there were 100 goats. Few of them have made it to your dinner place. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side, I see there are so many horses running around. In fact, Arjun told me that he spotted a couple of tigers when he went out for a walk last night. So it's a dream come true, Thomas. Again, thank you very much for hosting Middle East Fine that meeting on your private here. Toastmasters and friends, Midley is one of the finest clubs in all of us. It's been 10 years in existence. It's not simple 10 years. So many individuals have made a great difference, who have built this club from scratch and helped it through this journey and today's celebration. I want to thank from the bottom of my, bottom of my heart each and everyone who was responsible to build this club and also wish Midley for several such wonderful occasions in the future. As I was having my dinner, I was just thinking about my three years in Toastmaster. What a fantastic, not really, what a okay journey for the last three years. <laughs> it has its own pitfalls. CC1, CC2, CC3, and started playing roles. After months of agony, I won the best role player award for playing GE. Somehow I feel Midlands were kind enough to vote for me because I didn't win anything for months. <laughs> and promptly it was posted in the Facebook by our PR. One of my college mates called me and said, Hey, it's amazing. At your age, you are not wasting time. You are going around and giving awards to youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 it is the youngster giving me the award. <laughs> I won my first ribbon. What? You in public speaking? You must be kidding. In college, you never even came to stage for a single minute. Why are you torturing yourself and also the audience now? <laughs> he told I just want to give it a try. He told me, I hear Toastmasters are a nice set of people. They may not tell you directly. <laughs> so they are crying in silence. <laughs> I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. Then I happened to see World Championship speech of 2003 by Jim Key. It's never too late to dream. It is as if Jim Key was talking to me one on one. He said, age is just a number, just go ahead. So I promptly came back. Promptly came back and started my CC4. He asked me, Mutter, what is this? He said, it's all about grammar, similes, metaphors, priors, and alliterations. Alligators? <laughs> alliterations. Have you not done any grammar in your school? I did log back, but I have never heard this alliteration thing. These are send you some information. Try to do whatever you can do. But till date, friends, I don't understand these alliterations. CC5, CC6. It's all about volume, which pays pause. Fantastic. Then I went to my mentor. Hey, I understand volume. What is this pitch? I know only cricket pitch. <laughs> he said, do you understand music? No. Can you sing? Absolutely not. <laughs> do you at least listen to some Carnatic songs? But very, very rarely. Then do you understand volume? Yes, I, I understand volume. No, no, don't raise your voice. <laughs> but he said, today evening you listen to a 
automatic sound. Just observe very carefully. Whenever the user, uh, whenever the singer uses volume, you can understand. Whenever the singer does not use volume, he or she is actually using the pitch. Just catch that. That is pitch. I didn't understand anything about it. <laughs> then I decided I will anyhow use all the four. I wrote four paragraphs. First paragraph was for volume. Second paragraph was for pitch. Third for for pace. Fourth, fourth one was for, was for pass. The evaluator was nice enough to give a brilliant evaluation. She came and said, I love your speech, especially the fourth part. <laughs> Total silence. I wish you try and do more, more try and do it more often. So finally, CC, CC, CC9 and CC10. I was very excited to complete my CC journey. And I see what is the difference between these two. He said, there is a difference, but for you it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> for CC9, you are going to persuade them to sleep. For CC10, you are going to inspire them to sleep. <laughs> so thus continued my journey. And I was actually wondering how much I should have tortured all my audience and all these speeches. Then I also realized there are so many other people who torture you. There is one villain who has been at me all through my life. And that he was during even that day's dinner. Incisive, mean looking, body made of metal. He has tortured me all through my life. A simple life. You may be thinking, Mohan is making a very big deal about this. No friends, only those of you who have been tortured by this villain can understand my plight. There is just not one. <laughs> There is a group of them out to get you. <laughs> Depending on the occasion, they are there to spoil your lunches and dinners, and I have had my own share of the villain showing up. The very first sighting of this villain was in Bombay in 1984, where I got my first job after graduation. So Dollar Express was late. I was feeling very hungry. Once I settled down in my room, I went running to the nearby hotel. A crispy, shiny dosa was served. It was a eat. Clean, a knife and fork was kept. Dosa and fork, I couldn't believe. I wanted to toss it out and eat with my hands, but I saw everyone was eating with the fork. So I didn't have a choice. I took the fork and slowly touched the dosa. It cracked. In fact, one small piece jumped and missed the other person's plate. Now. <laughs> that guy got scared and took the plate and went to the next table. So I took another piece and dipped it in some water, pushed it, vanished. <laughs> so I moved my chair closer to the dosa and moved the dosa closer to my mouth. So there was hardly any gap between my mouth and dosa, but still it took 42 minutes for me. <laughs> so I was cursing my will and next day I started work and everyone, everybody at the workplace was very happy. Not because I joined, because the company had told that they are going to take us for the lunch at Obarai on the Saturday. That was my first five star visit. So at 12 p.m. I wore my best dress and went there. As the immaculately dressed doorman opened the door, I didn't know what to do. First time I was seeing such things. As I walked in, I realized my best dress was no match to the Bombay sense of dressing. They were all in fabulous dresses. So I felt very low and very left out. And added to that, the lunch started. So five of us were seated at the table. A lot of food was served. As I was looking at what is vegetarian there, there was this shiny villain smiling at me. <laughs> Let me see if we can eat it. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. Then the way the folks were attacking the pork with the fork was amazing. That made me more nervous. So finally I grabbed one small piece of bun, picked a cube of butter, stuffed it and ate it. <laughs> then Willy, who was sitting next to me, moved a bowl of noodles saying, Mom is a vegetarian. Let's give him some vegetarian food. I looked at the noodles, I looked at the fork. Villain and the noodles, they don't go together. So I as well decided to stay hungry. I didn't want to embarrass. New situation, new job, new people, I didn't want to embarrass myself. So after the much hyped five star lunch, I went running to a Bawaji shop and I had two Bawajis. I was wondering, why don't we use the God given fork, such a flexible one, our own arms, right? Instead, somebody created this stupid metallic piece, which is a look alike, which is no way compared to our arms, and we start struggling to eat our lunches and dinners with that. But slowly things changed. As years rolled by, things were improving. A lot of people were eating food with hands. In fact, one American CEO once when we were having dinner, he told me, I don't know who invented this stupid food. He says, his and he and his family love to eat with their hands. They love masala dosa, rotis, and biryani. There's no need to use these forks. And also there are several fork-friendly uh, foods actually. So when I went challenged, I used to take 
penne pasta or uh, finally cut salad or rice or globally we can eat burgers sandwiches and pizzas with hands as things would pan out i thought the villain is of my life but he showed up in a very difficult moment very important meeting there was a meeting with the uk minister of the industry leaders where i was part of so after a few drinks we started the dinner and to my like the minister was just seated to me after the elaborate uh, setting of the table i saw three pillars right there just not one one with four prongs one with three both i could recognize but there was one with two what the hell was that i didn't know what it was then i decided to continue chatting not to start till i figure out what's going on in the table <laughs> in the exotic dinner then this minister seems to be a wise man he picked up picked up the two prong fork picked up a small piece of fish and as he was about to eat he just whispered out to me for which periods they should keep the two prong forks it is it will be could be confusing so i don't know how he spotted me no inability to use the fork so finally i managed whatever i could and then went up, uh, went home so friends villains like this keep showing in our life there is no difference so how we deal with them whenever such villains show up just toss them out eat the meal with your hands enjoy your meal enjoy your life